In this video, we will talk about the aggregate and annotate functions that can be used on query sets in order to retrieve some interesting information. So for this example, we will be using two helper applications within our Django project. The first one is customers. And if we take a look at the models py file of this application, we will see a very simple class with two fields, the name and the age. Then if we move to the second application, which is called purchases, if we go to the models py file, we will see another very simple class called purchase, where there are two fields, amount and customer, which is a foreign key to the customer class we saw just a few seconds ago. So we will try to answer some questions. So first of all, what is the average customer age? The second question is, what is the total customer age? So what is the total age of all our customers? Then we will take a look at the average age of our customers, but only the ones that are older than 30 years. Then we will take a look at the total purchases amount of all our customers. Next, we will see a total purchase amount of a specific customer. Then we will count the total purchases of a specific customer. Then we will move on and see how many purchases are there with the same value. So for example, 999 could be like over here, five purchases. Maybe there will be $100 with zero purchases with that amount or 100 purchases with that amount. And then we will take a look at the total amount of all purchases by customer. So here we have specific customer total purchase amount. Here we have the total customer purchases amount. And here we will have it segregated into baskets. So for example, customer one has spent $20 in total. Customer two spent $2,000 in total. Customer three spent $1 in total. You get the point. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing to do is to understand what is the difference between aggregate and annotate. And aggregate in general generates a summary of statistics for the entire query set, while annotate gener generates individual summaries of the statistics to each item that exists in a query set. So if those definitions don't seem obvious to you, you will understand the difference by going through the examples that are listed down below. And we will begin straight away by calculating the average customer age. But first we need to import the statistics that we want to use in our examples. So we will need average, sum and count. And those statistics are going to be imported from Django DB models. So let's grab them straight away. Average, sum, and count. There we go. And now we can create a variable called, let's say, result. And this is going to be equal. We will we want to grab the customer age. So customer objects and then aggregate and we want to grab the average and use it on the field of age and this is going to be our result which we can now return in a http response with the f string result result like this let's save it let's refresh and now we have av age average is equal to none so what I'm going to do is to go to the Django administration, open up the customers. And as you can see, I didn't add any objects. So I don't have any objects for customers as well as purchases. So I'm going to add three customers. The first one is going to be test one and the age is going to be 25. I'm going to save it, add another one, test two. The age is going to be 32. I'm going to save and add another one and test three. The age is going to be 50. I'm going to simply save this. Now I'm going to go back, hit refresh, 
and now we have the average age. All right. As the next step, let's grab the total customer age. So I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to create a new variable result, and this is going to be equal customer objects aggregate. And this time we don't want to use average, but sum, and we want to use it on the age field again. All right. So let's save this. Let's hit refresh. And now the age sum is 107. So we need to add 50 and then 32. This is 82. And then 25. The result is 107 and it matches the one that we see over here. All right. So let's comment this out as well. And now we want to grab the average age of customers older than 30. So again, result is equal to and then customer objects and then first before we actually use aggregate we want to filter and we want to filter the age greater than 30 and now we can use aggregate average and we want to use average on again the age field so let's save this let's hit refresh and we have 41 so 50 plus 32 divided by 2 is in fact 41. So now we have the next case to grab the total customer's purchases amount. If we go to purchases models py, we will notice that we have this foreign key relationship to the customer and we have a related name and named purchases and we will use this related name in our query sets. So if we go back to the core folder, to the views py file of our main project folder, we can now comment out this result and set a new result variable and set it to customer objects and then aggregate one more time. We will use sum on purchases, purchases and we want to refer to the amount field all right so going back to core purchases purchases amount like this all right so let's save this let's hit refresh purchases amount sum is equal to none and this is because we have no purchases so if we add a purchase for let's say $10, and it's going to belong to customer one. Let's save this. Let's hit refresh, and we have $10. Let's add another one, $20, and it's also going to be for customer one. Save it, and now we have 30. Let's add another one, $9.99, customer two, and let's add uh, add another one for customer three. Uh, let's uh, say it's fifteen dollars. Customer free. Okay. Let's hit refresh, and there is our total amount of all our customers. This is how much all our customers have spent in our store. So let's comment this out. And let's move to the next case, specific customer total purchase amount. So again, result is equal to, and then we need to first grab a customer. So customer objects filter, filter uh, because we can't use um, aggregate on get. So we need to use filter. ID is equal to one. So we want to do it for the first customer, the test one customer. And then we can use aggregate. And here again, we want to use sum and then sum and purchases amount. Okay, let's save this. And it's 30, okay, because the first purchase. Of ten dollars and the second purchase of twenty dollars belong to test one. All right, 
So now we can comment this out as well. And the next case is going to be extremely similar. So what I'm going to do is actually copy this part, paste it below and change sum to count. Okay, let's save this. And if everything goes correctly, the result should be two because test one has two purchases. Let's hit refresh, not over here, but over here. And there it is. Before we move on to the next case, how many purchases are there with the same value? Uh, I would like to introduce the concept of values. Values is a function which you can also use on a query set and it makes our query set return um, a dictionary of objects. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how this works just right now. I'm going to comment result and somewhere over here, let's create another result that is equal purchase objects, objects, values. Okay, and then we are going to print the result. Okay, and then let's also have result two is equal to purchase objects all. And then we are going to print the result two as well. Let's save this. Let hit, let's hit refresh. We don't see anything over here. But if we go to the terminal, we will see that the first case is a query set which returns dictionaries, while the traditional uh, query set returns objects. Okay, so I hope you can see the difference. I'm going to make uh, the terminal a little bit bigger. Okay, and what we can do using values is to grab a specific field in a very easy way. So maybe we would like to. Uh, refer to the amount over here. So I'm going to grab the amount, hit refresh, and now I have just the amount, right? And using this approach, we can annotate count and the an amount, okay? So I'm going to show you how this works right now, but let's bring the result under our example. And now we can use annotate and let's use count as mentioned before. And we want to use count on the amount. Amount, just like this. Let's save this. Let's hit refresh. And over here we have a summary. Amount 999, the amount count is one. Amount $10, the amount count is one. Amount $15, amount count is one. Amount $20, amount count is one. So let's go to purchases and let's add $9.99 and assign it to test three, to the customer test three. Let's save this and now let's hit refresh. And 999 should have the amount count of two and there it is all right so i hope this is understandable and let's move to the final case so here um, we will have a similar situation i'm actually going to bring our uh, code which we've written in the previous example to the one as well and i'm actually going to change the amount to customer so right now we want to know the total amount of money spent by customer. So we will refer to the customer field and annotate not count, but sum. So we want to sum the amount spent by a specific customer. So let's save this. Let's hit refresh and we need to move to the terminal. And there it is. So we have customer one has spent $30. Customer two has spent $9.99 and customer three has spent $24.99 with some zeros. So in this video, we covered some very basic examples on how to use 
aggregate and annotate and what are the differences between these two. I hope you guys liked the tutorial and if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and we will see each other in the next video. Take care and bye bye.